Callum Smith, Billy Joe Saunders. It's a potential fight. How would you see that one going? Mate, that's, that is a domestic layer, but yet on a world level, but two domestic fighters. Um, that's one of, the, one of the best ones that can be made right now. You're talking about totally different styles, but two really high quality operators. Callum's been, you know, he, he's been so talented from day one. He's, he's shown his potential. Then he's gone out there in, in, in um, Super Series and, and performed and, and done the business. And he is, you know, he is the number one super middleweight in the world, regardless of, of stature. Billy Joe Saunders, for me, um, I've always read, I've always liked, um, I've always appreciated his skills. But then when I was doing cuts for Andy Lee, when Billy Joe Saunders fought Andy Lee, when you see him that close and you're studying that close, it's, it's weird. You can be sat sat row a, being in the corner it, it's you're, you're immersing it even more and you see every little, little subtle thing that they're doing billy joe's a master boxer he is brilliant and then i've i've you know i've been fortunate to watch him in sparring um just, just briefly a couple of times um around here and around there um and he is brilliant i've, I've seen him spar when he's out of shape when he's out of shape first far back and, and and you just look at him and you just think wow he's good so a fight between those two um you would say that callum callum's physical dimensions and the size of him should lead him to win the fight but with with billy joe Saunders boxing ability i don't know i can see him winning the fight I can, I, it's a generally 50 50 fight um and i just I just don't know. I genuinely don't know. I can see both men how they win the fight. That's not sitting on the fence. That should be just saying. I, I genuinely don't know that either man can win the fight. So you don't see too much in the fact that Callum is such a, a big super middleweight, probably going up, and Billy Joe is a small super middleweight and, and has been talked about going back down. You see, that's what I'm saying. That That is the possibility because it, Callum just might be too big for him. But... With certain fighters, a skill level can negate a size difference. And and I would say that Billy's in that category where his skill level could negate that size difference. Could. I'm not saying it's going to, but out of everybody else that's that's in, in that division, um, I would say that he's the one that's probably got the, the most chance of, of beating Callum Smith. I, 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 it sounds disrespectful saying the most chance I generally see it as a 50-50 fight but I'm torn on if you were saying you have to you have to pick a name I'm torn because I actually want to say I think Billy Joe Saunders would figure him out and would outbox him and just just outbox him and, and, and be very very close but would win on points but then the other side of me thinks the physical presence of, of Callum as the rounds go on, where well, we've seen Billy fade in rounds before, in, in, towards the end of fights before, maybe if that was to happen in, in, in that fight, Callum's physicality would be able to put it on him and, and, and make him pay for that. Whereas, you know, somebody that's a similar sort of size, sort of similar sort of reach, Billy's got the skill level to just to negate what they're trying to do. Whereas if, if Billy started tiring, in, you know, past round seven onwards, round eight onwards, then... Callum's range and size would be able to put that pressure on him and would be able to find him. So it's one of those where the more I think about it, if I think if I put Billy's name in my head, I start figuring out how Billy's going to beat him, how he can beat him. But then if I start thinking about Callum, I think, well, well actually, Callum could do this. And so I, I genuinely don't know. I genuinely don't know. Another 50-50 uh, fight coming up uh, a week today, in fact, as we're recording this, or a week tomorrow as we're recording this, is Daniel Dubois versus Nathan Gorman. And you've uh, you've worked some British heavyweights in your time. How do you see that one going? Do you know what? That's a really good fight because I like both fighters. You know, I don't know him. I don't know him. But as fighters, I, I like both fighters. But I like Dubois, you know. There's something about that kid. I like him. Um, a little bit stiff. Um a little, especially early doors, a little bit stiff, a little bit robotic, but he seems to be getting it. He seems to be settling into the pros now. You talk about two, you talk about a novice pro, really, um, and he's developing. He's not a fight, finished article, and it's a good level domestic fight for him. It's a good domestic fight for him. Um, I don't know, man. It's it's like um, it's 
it's perhaps a little bit similar to when um, Lennox Lewis fought Gary Mason. You know, that, that kind of fight. Um, Gorman's, Gorman's got angles and yes, he's fast and, and he can you know, he can box. Um, Dubois big and he's got a great jab and he's got a booming right hand. And, and I do think he's developing as a fighter. Um, I think if you, again, if I had to, if I had to pick a winner, I would perhaps lean to to Dubois, but I think it's going to be a great domestic heavyweight fight. I don't, I don't think it's going to be, oh, Dubois comes out and sposhes him straight away. You know, I think there's going to be rounds in there where Dubois is losing. It could, it could be losing. You know, um, because Gorman's got a got a good boxing IQ and and he's got, it's quite mobile for a big guy. He's quite quite mobile. I just think the difference might be punching power. I don't see Gorman as as, as a big puncher. Um, certainly not as heavy-handed as Dubois. I think I think he's definitely got the got the firepower there. Dubois has got a good jab. Um, I like um, I liked his um, when was it? Was it his last fight when the kid really had a go at him? And they had a, yeah. a ding dong for about Richard thirty Mark. seconds. Yeah. yeah. Um, I liked his attitude in that. You know, he can have it. He, he's he's not one of these young kids that when when you start whacking him back, he's gonna fold a little bit. He'll have it. Um, I mean, I don't know how good his chin is. I don't, you know, when he steps up to, to world level, I don't know. But I liked seeing that. I thought, oh, okay, you're not you're not a guy that that lights it your own way, and then you get it back, and you start thinking, oh, hang on a minute, because that can happen with a lot of big guys. Because the when I say big guy, I mean giants. Your giants like your AJ, your Furies, your Prices, your Klitschko, them sort of guys. They do, they they don't usually get hit that often because usually in sparring there's not that many quality good guys that are giants as well to spar with because they can't spar with him because they might bite him and, and you know and so on so they're not experiencing getting hit that often and um, it might be just the odd shot in sparring the odd shot they get caught or it's by a guy that's a, um, a level below they might have this dimensions but quality wise they might be a little bit level below so they're not careful of landing not as often but then when they get tagged sometimes they can be they can show it because they're not used to it um but Dubois, I thought Dubois, like, yeah, he, he didn't mind getting whacked a little bit and, and, and fighting in a bit of a shootout. Yeah, so he's, he's got that excitement to him as well. So do you think they're going to come out of this actually with their stock having risen for taking a big fight and, and getting the eyes on them at this stage of their career? I certainly hope so, as far as the public's concerned. I mean, two, two unbeaten heavyweights colliding when they don't have to. What's not to like about that? This is what boxing should be about. When George Groves boxed James DeGale, I was involved with George, George Groves working with Adam Booth. Um, that was a massive fight for two guys that were at the embryonic stage of their careers. You know, both of them. You know, George Groves won. James DeGale lost. James DeGale won the world title first. George Groves ended up being world champion. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. People say, "Oh, they should wait. Let it stew. Let it stew." No, get it done now. And then the rematch is always there. It's always going to be a big fight. It's always going to be a big fight, you know? When you wait, listen, we've just seen it with, with, with the AJ loss. When you talk about, when promoters get involved and start saying, oh, not yet, not yet, wait till next year, it'll be a bigger fight, bigger fight, big fight. There's only so many times you can roll that dice before it's heavyweight boxing. You're probably going to get clipped. You're probably going to get clipped. And all plans and dreams and everything goes, it's heavyweight boxing. And the more you roll that dice, the more chance of getting beat. And so while the fights are there, get them made. So if this fight, if this fight doesn't sell, if it doesn't sell the arena completely out, and if it doesn't do the massive numbers that they were hoping, it'll do big numbers and it'll get a big crowd. Be happy with that. Hopefully the fight's a good fight, which I think it's gonna be. And then carry on watching these two guys work on the career. And then it might happen in a rematch. If the rematch happens, if they've both gone on to, to be successful after this fight, the rematch is massive. It's massive. That's what it should be about. That's what it should be about. Not not this, you know, oh, we'll be matched again. Oh, let's swerve it. No. Do it. Do it. If you get beat, come back from it. Because it's been done before. But it's, you know, everybody's got to be on the same page. Managers, trainers and fighters have all got to be on promoters. They've all got to be on the same page as that and have that. But a lot of times... They're too worried about losing what they've got. But if you generally think that your man's good enough, 
you'll you'll do it. Or if you if you're thinking about the if your man's got the capability of accepting that if he does get beat, if as long as I learn from it, I can come back from it. Then you can take that gamble. If you've got if you, there's fighters out there that you know that if they get beat mentally, they probably won't take it and they'll never be the same fighter again. That's where you have to be a bit more protective, and that's where you might see fighters getting swerved, you know. Um, but they're, you know, I, I would, I would, I would, I would like to think that they're 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 not in the majority. How do you prepare for Arthur Spilka? He's just he's southpaw. He's just southpaw heavyweights. It's just there's not many, not many great southpaw heavyweights out there. Um, it, it's hard to prepare for, especially when you know you're talking about would that style be great for Derek ten years yeah. ago? No, it won't. So it's not really the style that you want. But he's working hard in the gym. Um, he's he's it's great. Do you know what what I've always liked Derek. I've always respected him. I've always, you know, I've always got on him when I've seen him. And I, I got to know him through Bellew. Um, but uh, he's great to have in the gym. He's such a nice fella. You know, he's, he's great with my kids. My kids, my, my daughter calls him Uncle Deza. And whenever she's talking about him, um, you know, they really look up to him. They really like him. Um, he, he rings me up. Uh, how's the kids? How's the family? He's such a nice guy. He's, people don't see that side of him. Um, but he knows he knows when it's game time. He knows, you know, he knows he has to be a certain way when it comes to fights. I think the fights where he looks sloppy and lazy are the fights that he can't get up for. He's up for this one. He knows it's a tough fight. He knows he's got a danger in front of him. Um, he has he has to implement himself onto Spilka. You can't just let a, a southpaw dictate with southpaw jab and, and, and start getting that left hand to work. He has to dictate from the start. Um, and if he does that, then happy days. And a quick word on Dillian White. He's obviously got, <laughs> Derek's up, mate. Uh, he's obviously got a big fight coming up, a real 50-50 again. Should he win that? Should he win that? Uh, where, just just give me a top five heavyweights in the oh, that's world. Hard. That's hard. That if he wins. Do you know what? I'm gutted for Dillian because he gets a bit of a stick because he didn't take certain fights. And, but you have to look at the mechanics of part of them deals and why didn't he take them fights and things like that. And the only one that I think that he should have took, but again, I'm not, I'm not part of his management and team, and I don't know figures hundred percent and stuff. But I think he should have took the AJ fight, um, because I think if you you get made that kind of money, all right, you think you're worth more, but that's only because the money that the AJ is generating. I think he should have, and I, I think maybe he probably kicks himself because after watching Andy Ruiz, he probably kicks himself think that could have been me. But that can be said for anybody. All those guys that turned down the AJ fight, Miller who cheated through his backside, literally, and, and, and blew his opportunity to fight AJ. I saw an interview with him. I know I'm going off topic, but I saw an interview with him where he started slating AJ for getting beat by Andy Ruiz. Who cares what you think, mate? You're a cheating scumbag. You know, and 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 then you've got the the now after failing three tests for that fight to then come on and start chatting crap about AJ. No, no, you can't do that. But Dillian, the way that he's been trapped by, he's, he's been WBC mandatory for what is it, six hundred plus days. Man, that's disgusting. That's disgusting. You know, Deontay Wilder has been able to fight who he wants to fight, and this is this. WBC, WBC right now, they're not. Do you know what? I love WBC and and I, I I I think that's the best belt out there. The one that they actually mean that's a world champion, not the pearl, not the franchise, not all that sort of crap. I just feel like Dylan deserves to get a crack, um, because he keeps fighting real fights. He has real fights, dangerous fights, ones where you're rolling that dice. And I've said before, you can only roll that dice so often before you get beat. You know, when you keep taking, when, when, you know, I like this thing where people say, oh, you got exposed. Yeah, you got exposed because you fought top level. It's not being exposed. That's losing a top level fight. That's, that's boxing. And Rivas is a, is a dangerous fighter, mate. He's a dangerous fighter. He comes swinging and he's powerful. He's compact. Um, it's going to be exciting. And 
while, however long it lasts, it's going to be a great fight. And the atmosphere in that arena is going to be pumping. You know, when when when, when we're having the introductions and everything, he looks the part. Really, look, you know, he's, he's sculpted and he looks great. Um, and he'll come out bombing. I think the big key is Dylan's left hand. He's got to get. He's, he's got to get. He's got to get his timer on his jab. He's got an underrated jab when he uses it. You know, um, he, he he can jab it out. Um, and you know, he's he's, he's got to be careful. He's got to be careful, especially early doors. Um, and I just think maybe with that with that sculpted physique, uh, Rivas, if Dylan can can start whacking him downstairs and and breaking that body up, then you know maybe that that will slow him down. And then Dylan can start finding finding their shots and find that lovely left up that he, he likes to fire um, for a stoppage. But however long it lasts, it's going to be exciting. And I've spoke to a couple of people here, you know, and they fancy Rivas. Quite a few people. I'm, I'm talking about boxing people fancy Rivas. And it wouldn't surprise me. But I'm gonna I'm gonna go with Dylan, and then hopefully, hopefully he gets his shot at a world title. And Derek's going to be cheering him on as well. Yeah, do you know what? It, it, that is so mad. That is really mad. Because obviously, we know the history and everything between them. Um, and then I was in the changing rooms before Derek's last fight. And um, I have the changing room locked when we're about to, you know, whether we start warming up or we're getting, to, getting towards that. And uh, Derek was just sat on the sofa. And then the door, the door went, so I've opened the door. <laughs> and I get on well with Dylan, right? I, I think Dylan's great, you know. My my little boy was in hospital with meningitis last year, and um, Dylan, he was messaging me, seeing how he is. He's still now, still uh, as your little boy, and they said, you know, that, that's nice. That is, you didn't have to do that. I've always got on with Dylan, but that, you know, he's, he's he's a nice guy. He's not. People see this rough side to him, but he's, he's like Derek. They're both rough, and they both can flick and start throwing tables around and start swinging punches. But but then they're both nice guys. Strange, but. I've opened the door <laughs> and I've just looked up and it's Dillian. I thought, <laughs> what do you want? And I just went, hey, can I come in? Can I come in? Yeah, can I just come and say hello to, to Derek? I didn't know what to do. I just looked. I've gone, uh, Dylan's here. And Derek was like, yeah, yeah. So they've come in and Dylan's been in the changing rooms for about half an hour just chatting, just having a laugh. And it was just really good. It was really good. So it just shows you the sport. This sport's brilliant, man. You can have some serious beef. And I'm talking about them two hating each other. You know, you can have that serious, serious beef between two. They have bad sides to them. You know, I don't think anyone are going to think that I'm, I'm wrong for saying that. They have bad sides to them. But then you get in the ring and you fight it out. And with them, it took two fights. You fight it out and then you end up being mates or respect or, you know, and they, won't be, they won't listen. They ain't going to be sending postcards when they're on all the and, and, and Christmas cards at, at festive periods, but they get on all right now. And it's, I think that's beautiful to see. And that shows what our sport is. You know, it's next level. All right, then finally, you dodged it before. Your top five heavyweights. Ah, oh, man, I ain't got a clue. I just, what are you asking me that for? Because whatever I say, people are going to slag me off anyway. Um, That's the idea. Yeah, it's, it's, it's all it's stitching me up. Um, oh. Do you know it's a difficult one? Because what we always say, and, and I've done it with my own fighters, when you're building fighters, you know when you used to look at boxing news ratings and things like every time they come out and think, all right, your man's number 61, he takes a fight against number 41, he goes in and he takes his spot when he beats him and then he takes the next man's spot and that's how it works. So if that's how it works, AJ was number one. He's got three belts. AJ was number one. Don't matter what anyone wants to say. Andy Ruiz has gone and beat him then kind of you have to say Andy Ruiz is number one. Does that mean that number two, three, four can't beat him? No, it doesn't mean that. But Andy Ruiz, you have to give him the due respect that he's gone in there. He's number one. The problem is that people don't want to do that because of the way he looks. And he don't look like he should be heavyweight champion. But bodies don't win fights. Andy Ruiz went in, did the business. He did what Povetkin couldn't do. He did what, um, not Povetkin. Um, yeah, well, Povetkin. Yeah, Povetkin. He did what Povetkin couldn't do. He did what Takam couldn't do. He did what Klitschko couldn't do. He went in and beat the man. So he deserves to be number one. So I'm going to put him at number one. Number two, 
Now, now, this is where I'm saying you beat your Tekken Man's rating when you beat him. I know he didn't beat him on paper, but for all intents and purposes, he schooled him apart from two shots. Tyson Fury, I'll put number two. Because, because of what he did with John Wilder. And in past history, what he did with Vladimir Klitschko. But it's kind of like, to, when, when a fighter has so long out, you can't really judge him on that as such because a lot of time has passed. So I'm just going to go on, on the Wilder fight with the ease, apart from the two shots, really. Um, I will say Tyson Fury, number two. Number three, I'll go with AJ. AJ beats Ruiz in a rematch. What happens? AJ goes back to number one. Um, oh, it's a Wilder. I forgot about Wilder. <laughs> Do you know what? Go it's hard. Because you go on that last fight, Wilder beats AJ on that last fight. But I've always had this feeling that that fight is just a 50-50 fight. Um, so, but, but I've had the feeling that AJ could outbox him. And then, then cash it. But if you're going on that last fight, then you go, ah, do you know what? I, I don't know anything about boxing. I just give my opinion. <laughs> So going on that fight, you would have to—I would suppose—you would have to put Wilder third, but then Wilder looked that bad against Fury. That, yeah, because he did. He looked poor, and, and 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 in the spots that Ortiz, when Ortiz boxed him, he looked poor. No, I'm sticking with AJ number three. I think AJ number three. I still think AJ, as long as you don't get clipped, beats beats Wilder, and then Wilder number four. And then the wild card of five. Uh, Dillian. That took, that took a bit of getting to that, didn't it? Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. I told you, I don't know anything about boxing, it's just my opinion. That's it.